Hey guys, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. In this video, we're gonna talk about tourniquets that I bought off of Amazon. Went on Amazon, I bought three for 15 bucks like many of you guys have. Uh, so I wanted to test it, see how it shows out on video here, and then show you some of the differences between this tourniquet and a North American Rescue tourniquet. Because I can, I do wanna take the opportunity to talk about tourniquets and when we should use them. So you've got massive bleeding like oh my gosh that's a lot of blood uh arms and legs you've tried to hold direct pressure you can't get the bleeding to stop then you should put a tourniquet on it uh, put it above the injury at least three inches above yes high and tight is three inches above the wound uh, but put it above the injury pull it tight secure it spin the windlass until bleeding stops and then get them to a hospital get them to surgery so let's take our tourniquet here out of the packaging here this is a Ziploc bag. It's a nice Ziploc bag. And they do give you some directions on here how to use your tourniquet. So that's at least good to provide that information there. And then we have our tourniquet. So we'll start out looking here at the differences between the packaging. It's pretty easy to pick up first if you're at a gun show, something like that. Uh, you can see the differences in packaging. This is the Chinese manufacturer, company unknown. Uh, this is the North American Rescue Cat Tourniquet. So you can see the differences here in uh, packaging. Now for this particular video, I am going to be covering, this is a copy of an older generation cat here uh, by the Chinese manufacturer. This is a Gen 7 North American Rescue Cat. So we can see the difference in the timestamp here. So kind of a little giveaway there if you're looking at a gun show and find some open cats, things like that. Uh, one of the easiest ways to look at these and see this is a Chinese manufacturer is the back plate. On the Chinese one, it's smooth. On the North American Rescue Wear, we have CAT and all the information there from that one. Another way we can look at this pretty easily is with the timestamp here. I know this was a gray one because this is a Gen 7, but the previous generations did have a white tab just like this one over here. But the time just doesn't look clear. It's a little bit farther off. So you can look at the timestamp. It's kind of a giveaway there. A lot of times in class we get uh, students come in and they've got these particular tourniquets here. Either they bought them at a gun show or they bought off Amazon and they want to know what we think about them. Generally I will demonstrate uh, some of the weak points of the Chinese manufacturer here in class and I've broken quite a few of them. Honestly some of them have held up and I'm like oh, okay that one, that one didn't break. Uh, but I've broke quite a few. The windlass is the weak point here. The buckle's a weak point, uh, so I show the students that in class and kind of give them some demonstrations here. So this is the Chinese, Chinese manufacturer. We just took it out of the packaging here. And like I said, one of the things that I've noticed is the windlass is the weak point. This is where you're getting all your leverage, mechanical advantage to get occlusion for blood flow. So you pull the strap super tight and you start turning this. This is your mechanical advantage. If this fails, you no longer have mechanical advantage. So this is a weak point. So here, Look at that. God. I can make that a U shape just by my hand there. This is your mechanical advantage and it's that flimsy. That scares me. With the Cat 7 here, look how strong that windlass is. You get a little flexibility, but nothing like I can't make that a U shape. Okay, much stronger. All right, so let's take a look at the Chinese knockoff version here. Straighten up my windlass here a little bit. So put it on above the injury, pull it super tight, as tight as you can get it. You shouldn't be able to get any fingernails up under there. That's how you know you have the band tight. And look at that, like let's see if I can get that on camera. Look how much slack is in there in that inner band. That really scares me. You have to make a lot more turns to get started getting occlusion. You may not have that time. You may not have the strength. So that kind of scares me a little bit. I'll show you here the Gen 7 in just a second. So let's start spinning. Okay. And then, okay. So it didn't break. That surprised me. I really thought I'd get the windlass to bend and break on there, but it's in there. I had a little bit of trouble getting into the wings. And see if I can get it to zoom in there. The wings are starting to form down. Like they're starting to, under pressure, start to fold down. So it made me a little more difficult to get the windlass in because they're trying to buckle cup down. 
that is pinching like crap right there. That hurts really bad. So pinching, weak point right there. So, but it works. Like it's, I have delayed capillary refill and no radial pulse. All right, so I'll show you real quick on the Gen 7 here. There again, pull it super tight. No fingernails up under there. No slack there. Like may I put one finger up under there, not a big deal. So I'm already getting occlusion just that little bit. Man, it hurts. So you can see the difference how many times I rotate the tourniquet. Boom. God, that hurts really bad. No pulse. Boom. So you may not have the strength, may not have the pressure to keep turning over and over again. Big deal. You can see, staying flat, no pinching. All right, so we'll run another test here just to show you guys I'm not lying. I do not have a Doppler, okay? Like that would be the way to test this to make sure we have a Doppler, the way we don't have blood flow, nothing like that. But I do have a pulse ox, so not exactly super scientific, uh, but it is a way to test. Let's see, let's put it in this one, fingers out. Okay, so boom, pulse is 80, O2 saturation at 97%. So let's put this on. I did get another tourniquet, another Chinese one here, so. So pull it tight, double check it, and then start to rotate. Okay. Pops in, one, okay, delay capillary refill. Waiting on this to stop. Boom, so you can see, get that to zoom in on my pulse hox here. Can't get it to zoom in, but it's not what to zoom in, does it? So, we now have a reading of zero. This actually did work. So just out of curiosity, we are gonna apply it to my leg and see what happens. So pull it tight. Start to rotate around. Feels like I've got blood flow cut off there. Didn't break. So, in this particular non-scientific test, they all work. They all occluded blood flow. None of them broke necessarily in this video. Uh, you can see they've got some stressor marks here and that windlass is, <laughs> cracks me up. It'll do a U shape. Um, so, that does honestly truly really worry me that I would go to apply this on a real patient and it would break. So it's still my recommendation to purchase a North American Rescue cat tourniquet. I would trust this company, the reputable company. We don't know who the Chinese manufacturer is. We don't know their quality control. Lots of stuff to go in there, but I would trust my life to North American Rescue. Currently, there's been no documented cases of Gen 7 failures. What problems people do have is they don't get that initial band tight enough and they keep spinning, spinning, spinning the windlass. But if you get that initial band tight pull, then no problems there. So I hope this video helps. You never know when you'll be the first responder. Remember you need the right gear and the right training.